what were people of other faiths doing? Let me see if I can get the camera down here so you can see Jamal. I can't hardly reach because Leo's on my lap. Sorry, Leo. <laughs> I squashed him. Hold your chin up so they can see you, Jamal. In that time and in that place, in the land of Canaan, there were fertility goddesses. Goddesses like Astarte, Ishtar. The people of Canaan and the people of Egypt sought the blessings of the fertility goddesses. They wanted and they needed their crops to be fertile. They needed their livestock to be fertile. That was their livelihood. Their families were dependent upon it. The goddesses of fertility were served by male priests called a sinu and a person, an ordinary person like you or I, couldn't just go to the fertility god. They had to go to the priest who served the fertility god, goddess, the fertility goddesses. And the people in that culture, the people in that community believed if they could touch the priest, that their crops would be blessed. They could touch the priest, evil would be gone, good fortune would come. You know, when I think about that, if I touch the priest, I'll be healed or I'll be blessed. I think about the woman who reached out to touch Jesus's hem. Remember that story in the Bible? It was believed by the people of Canaan, the people of Egypt, by the people in that community. That physical touch with the Sinu, the priests of the fertility goddesses, would ward off evil. And that was part of their worshiping ritual, to touch the priests. But wait, there's more. Sexual intercourse was also a way of touching the priest. And it was believed that that was the most powerful and the most effective way of all to receive blessings, especially for the male worshiper. Why? Because at that time, the male worshiper believed that intercourse with the priest would allow him to leave his greatest possession, which would be his semen, his fertility. And remember what Lorraine told us at the Wednesday night discussion? That there was once a belief that men were totally responsible for the life of a new child. They were totally responsible for babies being born. The belief was that the embryo was contained in the semen. That was the belief of that era, and these were their rituals. There was a belief that depositing semen in the priest guaranteed immortality for a man. So that's the homosexual practice. And I don't know about you, but to me that sounds a lot like homosexual temple prostitution. In my context, it just doesn't sound holy. It's almost beyond my belief that that would be a way of worship. And why? Because I'm in another culture. I live in a different context. 